Listen, Joan. We're not going to put up with your foolishness any longer. We all know that Berger is innocent. I don't. I believe he's guilty on all counts. You heard Deputy Inspector Hannigan testify he caught the man red-handed. There's no law saying a cop can't be mistaken, is there? You heard witnesses testify that Bergen wasn't even near the place. Yes, but I don't like the looks of those witnesses. I wouldn't walk down a dark street with any one of them. Look, Jones, we've been locked up in this room for seven hours. We want to go home. Personally, I'm getting tired of looking at you. Now, we're going to get a verdict, and we're going to get it quick. We've tried to reason with you, but if you're going to keep on being stubborn, we've got to try something else. Now, what do you say? What's a three-letter word for idle talk? <gasps> I'm sick and tired of your silly gab. That's it, gab. Thanks. <gasps> for the last time, will you listen to reason? Now, if you're trying to intimidate me, you're just wasting your breath. And I might also add, while we're on the subject, there's several things transpired in this jury room that I don't like, particularly the way that you tried to influence the rest of these men. Now, to me, the whole thing has a very bad odor. Why, you little shrimp? I'll bust you in the nose. Gentlemen, gentlemen, no violence, please. If you must bust Mr. Jones in the nose, wait till we get out of the jury room. I still believe the man is guilty. Oh, let's take another vote. Uh, I've just been checking with the gentlemen of the press, Mike, and they're laying six to an even that the jury will turn Berger loose. You're all wrong, boys. We've done a lot of hard work on this case, and the Dutchman's going up for a long stretch. You wouldn't care to place a small wager on that, would you? No, I, w I wouldn't want to be taking your money. It being a well-known fact that newspaper men and cops are underpaid. Save your tears, Mike. You'll need them. Come on, boys. Let's have a smoke. Has the jury reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Mr. Bailiff, will you hand me the verdict? Will the clerk read the verdict? We, the jury, find the defendant, James Berger, not guilty. It is the opinion of this court that the verdict as rendered is a gross miscarriage of justice. Well? They just turned Dutch back on loose again. So I heard. I can't understand it. I can. What do you mean? There's somebody bigger than the Dutchman, bigger than you and me, bigger than the Commissioner even. That's pulling their strings. You sure you haven't read too many newspaper headlines, Mike? I know what I'm talking about. Three times now we've had the Dutchman read to send him up the river and every time he's beaten the rap and I'm getting tired of it. Everybody's tired of it. But what can you do? Plenty. Tim, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to put me on special assignment. Let me drop out of sight for a couple of months. If anybody asks where I am, just tell them I'm on sick leave. I want to get hold of the fellow who's given the orders. Forget it, Mike. You're talking like a rookie cop. Why look for trouble? You've been on the force for 23 years now. In a couple of more years, you can retire on a pension and sit back and enjoy life. Not while there's a guy loose who's making it tough for every honest cop on the force, I won't. Oh, Tim, it's only two months that I'm asking you. And if I don't turn up with a pinch that'll crack this thing wide open... All right. I'll confess to being a rookie cop, and you can have my pension. Okay, Mike. You've got the assignment. But watch your step. If there is a big guy running things, he may not want you snooping around. I know how to take care of myself. Well, good luck. Thanks. Now, keep your eyes open, Jerry. I'm not after the little fellas now. It's the top man I want. Keep right on peddling these things, but don't say nothing to nobody. I ain't pinching small fry like you, you know. If you can find out anything, you can always get me at this phone number. And I'll put in a good word for you with the DA regarding that rap that's hanging over you. All you gotta do is drop in on that warehouse on 39th Street. Are you sure they've got an office up there? I, I ain't talking no more about it. Thanks, Benny. I'll do just that. And you stay out of town until you hear from me. Yeah, don't worry. I ain't coming back for a long time. Thank you. 
I said, and don't turn around. Get out quick before all cops and Tom get here. They got away, but I got what I've been looking for. You ready to make a pinch? Well, not quite. I will be in a couple of days, though. There's two or three things I want to check over to be sure. Because when I do make the pinch, there's a lot of people going to be surprised. And I wouldn't wonder if you're a bit surprised yourself. You don't suppose to tell me who you're going to knock over? No. No, I'm not telling a soul. Oh, it's not that I don't trust you, Jim. But you see, I haven't said a word even to my own family. Forget it. It's your case. I just wanted to be sure you got the right man. I've got the right man. I'm sure of that. And when I bring him in, I'm going to lay enough stuff on the DA's desk to put a stop to all this crooked business. Fine. I just wanted to be sure that you watch your step over the weekend. Oh, I'll be doing that, too. I'll be over the next corner. Okay. Had to get located the warehouse. No telling what he's found. He's getting too close for comfort. We've got to do something and do it quick. Good evening to you, Mrs. Hannigan. Mmm. Just full of wonderful smells your kitchen is this evening. Ah, turkey. There's no turkey you're getting. There's corned beef and cabbage. It's the same thing. Irish turkey. <laughs> I believe that's the reason I married you in the first place, I mean. You know, I always said that you could cook the best pot of Irish turkey of any girl in the block. Ah, go on with you, Michael Hannigan. Uh, that wasn't what you told me the night you asked for me hand. It was me rosy cheeks you mentioned in the uh, blarney that night. I mean, darling, <laughs> the still rosy Uh-oh! Uh -oh. Stop your nibbling now and you'll have no appetite for dinner. And don't you be eyeing that cake. Your eyes are too sharp, darling. It's Stevie home yet. Oh, he'll be along any minute now. Ah, that's good. Michael, darling, you look so tired. Did anything go wrong today? Oh, no, darling. Nothing at all. Everything was peaceful and quiet. Ah, fine. Well, supper will be ready in a minute now. Oh, uh, that's good. But just remember, you're not cooking all that stuff there for the neighbors. You
Hello, Bob. Hello, Steve. How soon is dinner going to be ready? Joe Kelly's coming by to pick me up. We're going to take the girls dancing at the Palisade Park. You and your Joe Kelly and your girls and your dancing, this lady you should be getting. You know, son, you're a working man. Not like Joe Kelly with his rich uncle and... Sure, and I know. And I ain't spent a Saturday evening at home since I started working at the brewery. And you don't know what's going to become of me if I don't start getting some sleep. Oh, but, Mom, I love you very much. Even though you do rouse me around all the time. Ah, oh, you're just like your father with your blammy. <laughs> and your nibbling. <laughs> you know, you know, Steve, I really think you should... Steve Hannigan, you stole a piece of that cake. Uh-uh. Tis a kiss I stole from the sweetest pair of lips this side of Killarney. Go to my kitchen right away. Go on, or you won't get any supper. Tell me, what do you think of the cake? As light as a banshee's footstep. Uh, <laughs> Mom, be a good girl and get me another cup of coffee, will you? All right, so there's plenty. I'll need it if I'm going to keep from going to sleep on my feet tonight. Everybody in this town must be drinking beer this summer. I tossed so many beer kegs around today that I let my arms would drop off. Well, you'll get no sympathy from me when you're working in a brewery. You expect to toss beer kegs around. Now, if you just listen to me and enroll in the police college, why well, then you'll soon be... Yeah, soon be pounding the pavements out in the country with a nightstick and a badge. We've had this all out before, Pop. This cop stuff isn't for me. I've got ambition. Ambition, is it? Working at a brewery, rolling a lot of beer cakes around? A lot of ambition that takes. <laughs> well, that's only for the summer. In the fall, I'm only going to work part-time and go to night school and study law. You know, we'd be a great combination. You'd pinch them and I'd get them out. Lawyers. <laughs> I know a lot of them that I'd like to pinch. Michael Hannigan, are you still happy to stay just because he wants to study law and be a gentleman? Are you saying that cops ain't gentlemen? I'd have you understand that no lady that I ever pinched ever accused me of not being a gentleman. <laughs> what about that lady that you picked up a couple of years ago for shoplifting? <laughs> the one that broke the umbrella over your head. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, she was no lady. Hey. What happened to your shirt? Looks like somebody's been trying to mow you down. <clears throat> well, uh, look, look at that now. I must have caught it on something, I guess, and ripped it. <clears throat> a rip, huh? Well, it doesn't look like a rip to me. There are two holes where it passed through the folds in the cloth. Like it might have been made by a bullet. Oh, Michael Hannigan, were you shot at today? Well, you see, darling, there was a lot of little children running around. Well, you were shot at. Don't deny it, no. Well, of course, if I have got to tell the truth, there was a little trouble. I knew it. I knew it. And you telling me everything was peaceful and quiet today. Well, at least I don't have to duck slugs down at the brewery. Will you stop your blathering? I'd have no more argument from either one of you. <laughs> it's getting so that a man can't eat his dinner in peace without his whole family prying into his private affairs. Now, that must be Joe Kelly. Now, pipe down. There's no sense in having him know we're having a ragtag and a bobtail. So, everything was quiet and peaceful today. Will you hold your wrist? This company we're getting. <laughs> Wait till you see her. <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. Hannigan. How are you? And Mr. Hannigan. How are you? I'll swear I don't know what you do to yourself, Mrs. Hannigan. But every time I see you, I say to myself, that woman is getting younger every day. Ah, oh, go on with you. You're a Kelly, all right. You know, it was a Kelly first kissed the Blarney Stone and, and found out what gave a man the gift of the gab. Oh, I mean it. Say, we better take her to the dance with her tonight. I bet she'd do a mean fandango when that band gets going. A regular hepcat, huh? Oh, <laughs> such talk. Can't you talk about dancing nowadays without dragging a pussycat into the car? <laughs> 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 well, maybe Pop would like to go with us. Sure. What about it, Pop? I don't want any of that jit about music. <laughs> Your mother and I are going to a concert in the park. The orchestra's playing Tchaikovsky's 1812. Yes, fine music, isn't it, Eileen? Oh, it's fine, all right, but it's not for me tonight. I'm going to confession. Confession? What would you be confessing? You never did a wrong thing in your life. Oh, little do you know. 
Well, the Iceman tracked all over me kitchen last Tuesday, and, and before I knew it, I, I'd use some awful words. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I've got to be going alone, I'd better be stepping on them. Now, say, why don't you bring your girls and come along with us? Oh, it's fine sitting there in the park under the stars, listening to good music. It's just like the angels was playing. Well, I, uh, <coughs> I'm afraid that'll be a little over our heads, Mr. Hannigan. Besides, the girls are counting on dancing. Sure. Okay, well, I'll be going anyhow. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Hey, Michael. Yeah? Aren't you going to change your coat? Change my coat? Well, oh, you mean not account of the hole in the sleeve? I think I'll wear it just as it is. Good night. What do you mean by that? Well, that's hard to say. Pop doesn't tell us what goes on in the department. Somebody threw a slug at him today and almost winged him. My sympathy, Mrs. Hannigan. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Your husband was a fine man. Uh, let's go see Steve a minute, shall we? You'll excuse us. Hello, Joe. Hello, Steve. Hello, Betty. Hello. This is Uncle Jim. How do you do, Mr. Kelly? Hello, my boy. I'm sorry we have to meet under these circumstances. I knew your father as fine an officer as ever served on the force. Thanks. And this is Betty Casey. She's Steve's girl. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Uh, Steve, can I see you a minute? Excuse us, will you? Look, it's uh, kind of an awkward thing I want to ask you, but I know sometimes a thing like this catches a family unprepared, and Uncle Jim and I were thinking maybe if you, if you need some help or you need some money, or Oh, gee, Joe, thanks a lot, but uh, we'll get along all right. Dad left some insurance, and I've got a job. Well, if you ever do need help, don't be a clam. Speak right up, kid. I'll remember that. Thanks again. Shall we be going along now, Joe? Okay. Should we uh, drop you off, Betty? Oh, thanks, but I think I'll stay with Steve for a while. Goodbye, lad. Goodbye, Mr. Kelly. Thanks for coming over. Goodbye, Goodbye. Miss Casey. Well, Say, bartender. Do we know a cop named Mike Hannigan? Hannigan? Yeah, he was a deputy inspector. Ran into a little tough luck a while ago and got killed. I wouldn't be knowing anything about that, mister. Are you sure you wouldn't? I understand he used to drop in here once in a while. Eddie, maybe you could help out this customer. Yeah? What do you want to know about him? No, but I... That's all I want to know. Come hey, on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. I understand you've been getting around asking questions here and there. Oh, who told you? Oh, I hear things. It's police inspector's business, you know. So you hear things. What of it? Don't you think you better let the police look for the man that murdered your father? The cops have been looking for him for three weeks now, and all I get from them is what I read in the papers. I suppose you accomplished much more than the police. Well, I haven't yet, but I will. And when I do... Look here, Hannigan. I asked you down here because I want to help you. Your father was a friend of mine. And I'm just interested in finding killed him as you are. All right, what do you want from me? The day your father was bombed, 
He told me he expected to make an important arrest. Did you find anything among his facts that might be a clue as to who that was? Well, if I'd found anything, why would I be going around asking a lot of questions? Nothing for you. I'd like to remind you, though, in case you did happen to stumble onto a clue, you might bring it to the police department. We're always ready to help, you know. Well, thanks, Inspector. If I need any help, I'll call on you. Is there anything else? Yes. Did it ever occur to you that you'd have more of a chance to accomplish what you're trying to do if you had a badge? You mean you want me to become a cop? Why not? Your father was a good one. Sure. And look what I got him. No thanks, Inspector. Well, this is really service you coming by and picking me up like this after work. But what's the catch? There's no catch. I just figured it was the only way I'd ever get to see you. You're never at home anymore. Well, I have been pretty busy lately. Yeah, I know. This is one night you're not going to do any prowling. But look, I've got a lot of things. Now, wait a minute, Steve. Let me get this off my chest. Have you uh, seen Betty lately? Yeah. I saw her last Sunday for a little while. For a little while, that's right. She said you dropped by for about five minutes. I've got a job to do. If it had happened to my old man, I'd feel exactly the way you do about it. But, kids, you can't work all the time. Now, that's why I made a date for us tonight. We're going skating. I got the cutest little blonde for myself, and wait till you see the girl I got for you. I'm telling you, I haven't got any time to go out on dates. And besides, I don't go out with anybody but Betty. Yeah, I know. That's what I told her when I made the date for you. <laughs> hey! Right, kid? Yeah, I guess so. What about you? Well, I seem to be all in one piece. Looks like that night prowling of yours has been annoying somebody. I guess so. Hey, this yours? Oh, yeah, thanks. Look, Steve, I know it's none of my business, but uh, don't you think it might be a good idea to get a badge or something to go with that cannon? Look, are you telling me that I ought to be a cop, too? Why, did somebody else tell you that? <laughs> You're the third. Well, all I know is that they've got a funny law in this state that says John Citizen isn't allowed to play Daniel Boone with a pistol. Oh, forget it. Let's get this thing straightened up. Why, so quiet, Steve. You haven't said three words all evening. Oh, I've been thinking about something. Anything you can't tell me? <laughs> oh, no, you started it. I've been thinking about what you told me that night at the house after the funeral. Is your father going to be home tomorrow night? Steve, are you going to do it? Yes, I believe I will. I guess your way is the way Pop would like to see it done. He had a lot of respect for the law, and, well, he always wanted me to be a cop. Oh, honey, I'm so glad. It's your lover's delight. Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> So we decided the right way to go about it would be to join the force. Then that is a wise decision, Steve. But it isn't as simple as that. Hey, what a bright idea. Well, uh, you see, it's like this, Mr. Casey. Steve and I have been pals for years. Well, we used to swipe fruit from Tony's push cart when we were kids. That ought to make us naturals as cops. Swiping fruit never made anybody a cop. Don't forget that. I'm sorry, Mr. Casey, I was only kidding. Seriously, I'm tired of loafing. Besides, these guys turned my car over when they tried to get Steve. Well, okay, I can't keep you from trying to get on the force. And before you can even get into the school, you have to pass the civil service examination. On your own. You can't get through with pull or political influence. And if you think because you know me, you're Betty. I'm not asking any favors. And leave Betty out of this. Well, now, don't get your neck all red, lad. I just want you to know how things are. All right, civil service examination at 10 o'clock Monday morning. Good luck. You'll need it. Huh. He sounds like he doesn't want us on the force. Oh, don't mind, Dad. He's always like that. It's a part of his job. 
you'll be pickle pink if you make the grade. And Steve, you've just got to pass those exams. Hey, hey, what about me? Don't I get any moral support? I gotta take those exams too, you know. I'll be pulling for the both of you. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got an idea. I think I know a guy we can get those exam questions from. <laughs> Back to his college days. Uh -oh. <laughs> Following men will stand. Carter. Flaherty. Jensen. Kelly. Moore. When you fellas didn't do so well with your examinations, your grades do not permit you to enroll in the police college. You're entitled to another chance next year if you want one. You can register your intentions with the sergeant as you leave the building. So long, Stevie boy. I guess I wouldn't cut out to be a cop anyway. I'll see you outside. Okay. The rest of you men passed your examinations with satisfactory grades. But you can wipe those grins off your faces. You haven't won a prize. You're about to begin a lot of hard work. You will report at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning and work till you drop. Your officers, right now, on the payroll of the city. Your badges and training uniforms will be issued to you this afternoon. That's all. Clear the room. Well, there it is, honey. Nice and new, and it's all mine if I can get through seven months of hard labor. Gee, it's well, Steve. I kind of like it. It's got a lucky number on it, too, 7-Eleven. Mm. I hope it's lucky for what I've got to do. So do I. You mean you're for me? Well, of course, honey, now that you're going to do it the right way. Well, it'll take a lot of hard work. Yeah, I know. Well, I probably won't see much of you nights. Maybe it won't be for so long. You know, it doesn't seem right for you to stay home on my account. You want to go out dancing and have some fun, and... Well, I don't want you to feel as though... Well, as though you're tied down. Steve Hannigan, what are you trying to tell me, that I'm not your girl anymore? Oh, honey, you know better than that. Well, how should I know when you stand there telling me I'd go out with other fellas? Well, I said nothing of the kind. I was merely trying to tell you that I didn't want yeah, you to... Yeah, that I was tied down. Well, if that isn't an invitation to go out with other fellas, then I'm... You're wrong, absolutely wrong. Oh, why are we out here arguing like this? And that's what I'd like to know. And I wish you'd settle it peaceably so a hard-working man that spends his days trying to drive ideas into the blockhead the rookie cops can get some sleep. Good night. <laughs> Look, honey. I don't want you going out with other fellas. I'm crazy about you, you know that. Hey, I just got an idea that'll take care of everything. I just thought of it this minute. You know, Joe Kelly's my pal. And he doesn't go around steady with anybody. He'd be glad to take you out. He's got a car, too. I wouldn't worry about you if I knew you were out with him. I suppose you would worry about me if I went out with somebody else. Oh, no, look, let's not start this thing all over again. I can't win. Yes, you can, Steve. I love you very much. Mm. One, two, fast, off. One, two. In case of riots or unruly mobs, where the wind is against you, you must fire the projectile beyond the crowd so that the wind will carry the gas back into the mob. Now this is a triple chaser. It covers a larger area in a shorter time. It is more effective in dispersing a larger crowd. All right, boys, go through it.
a minute, Hannigan. Let me see that gun of yours. Your father's gun? Yes, sir. Oh, pretty tricky. Bad action? Now try standing at right angles with the target. Line up your shoulders and neck. Keep the arm and gun straight out. Try to think of the bullet coming straight down your arm and not just out of the gun. Now go ahead. Well, three out of six. That's better. But it's only 50%. And if you're only 50% right, and the other guy happens to be a 100%er, you're in a tough spot. I know. You mind if I stay around a couple of hours tonight and practice? No, oh, help yourself, my lad. Go ahead. All right, boy, that's all. Shots and 16 hits. Not bad, huh, honey? Mm, good. And I'm the guy your old man kicked out of his school for rookie cops. Joe Kelly, you know that's not true. Just because you couldn't shoot answers to examination questions out of a gun, you think... Oh, skip it, honey. I was only kidding. Besides, I never argue with my best friend's girl when I take her out for an evening fun. Well, that reminds me. There's a new place opening in Jersey tonight. Good band, swell drinks, no curfew. Let's hop in the car and go and see what it's all about. What do you say? Find out. <laughs> found it in his pocket after the accident. Boy, oh boy. Payoff policy racket. Mercantile exchange, Midtown branch. Be a strong arm for mom. Mashio HQ. Can you make anything out of all those funny words? Can I? Well, if you'd given me this three months ago, the man that killed Dad would have been tried and convicted long ago. Now listen to me, Steve Hannigan. Don't you go getting yourself shot at an account of that book. I don't want anything to happen to you like it happened to you. Oh, oh, no, oh don't, no, don't worry, Mom. Nothing's going to happen to me. Who carried the account my father was investigating? It was under the name of the Investors Benevolent Fund. Well, who were they? Well, I have the slightest idea. All I know is the account was closed out late in June. Uh, June the 26th, to be exact. June the 26th. The day after my father was killed. You wouldn't know where they keep their money now, would you? Well, naturally, I wouldn't. But even if I did, I wouldn't be at liberty to disclose that information, unless, of course, I was subpoenaed as a witness in a court action. You see, there are certain confidences that... Yeah, I sure, I know. 
And naturally, you never had any suspicion that the investor's benevolent fund was the payoff account for the numbers racket. The source of money deposited with us is no affair of ours. As long as the depositor keeps up a sufficient cash balance... Yeah, we'll skip the rest. And thanks for nothing at all. Morning, Sergeant. Morning. I'm in police school. Well, why aren't you there? I took a day off. You see, I'm running down some clues. Oh, I see. And what crime might it be that you're about to solve? I'm on the track of the guy that murdered my father, Michael Hannigan. Well, why didn't you say so? So, you're Mike Hannigan's boy. Yeah. You say you've got a clue? Yes. This snapshot has something to do with it. You know anything about the one facing the camera? Hmm. Tough looking monkey, Eddie. Frontal type. FI-45. Well, come on. We'll see what's in the file. Well, there's nothing here. Maybe I'm letting you in for a lot of work, Steve. But why don't you start checking ship's photographers? If you can locate the fellow who took this picture... Thanks for the tip, Sergeant. I'll start checking. Hey, wait a minute. Don't be cutting too many classes, lad. Captain Casey has tossed many a rookie right into the street for less. Well, the captain will have to struggle along without me. I'll find out a few things. Thanks again, Sergeant. Yeah? Hannigan was absent again today, Captain. When Officer Hannigan does favor us with his presence, Tell him I'd like to have a little chat with him, personally. Did you ever see this picture? Yeah, I took that about a year ago, on a Bermuda trip. Who were the men? I don't know. Do you still have the negative? Nope. There's something phony about that picture, mister. What do you mean? Well, you see, on these winter cruises, I snap a lot of pictures on speculation, uh -huh. hoping they'll buy when they see the proofs. Well, these guys bought all right. They even insisted on buying the negative. Now, this fellow with his back turned here was picture shy. He slipped me 20 bucks for my film. Well, look, could you give me the date that that picture was taken? Yeah. I suppose my records ought to show it. Come on, we'll have a look. Oh, swell. If I could get the date, maybe I could get a lead from the passenger list. Come on. First, are you sure that those are the two men in the picture? Oh, positive, sir. Mr. Smith, uh, that's the one with his back turned, is a very generous tipper. You know, he once gave a st steward $10 for having his overcoat pressed. Well, that gets me exactly nowhere. Thanks. So you've taken it upon yourself to be a detective, right off the bat. Attending classes means nothing to you. Is that it? But let me tell you something, Hannigan. No rookie ever graduated from this school without doing the work cut out for him. And no rookie ever got that work done by cutting classes. But you don't understand. I Sorry. understand one thing. You're here to learn to be an officer of the law. You may not have heard about it, but there is a detective bureau in the police department. I'm going to give you one more chance, Hannigan. If you take my advice, you'll turn any clues you have over to Inspector Ryan and knuckle down to business. The one more slip and you're through. Now get out of here. Yes, sir. Why didn't you turn this stuff over to me months ago and ask for it? Well, I didn't have it then. I just found it a couple of days ago. Oh. Showed good judgment and bring it to me, Hannigan. I'll get busy on it right away. If you hear anything, Inspector, will you... Uh... You'll be the first to know that. Thanks. By the way, Inspector, is there an officer attached to headquarters with the name of Mascio? Mascio? Not that I know of. Why do you ask? Well, there's an entry in that book that must mean something. Here, I'll show it to you. There it is. Mesho HQ. What do you make of it, Hannigan? Well, I naturally figured the HQ had something to do with headquarters. And that maybe Mesho is a man's name. Yeah. I'll check on it. If there's anything to it, I'll let you know. Thanks, Inspector. Oh. Bye. Goodbye.
Hello? Oh, Steve. I thought you'd be interested in knowing that I'm through with night prowling for a while. Oh, good. Did you find the man you've been looking for? I didn't even get close to him. But your old man sure caught up with me, and boy, oh boy, did he lay me out for cutting school. Yeah. He convinced me I should turn over my stuff to Inspector Ryan and start going to classes for a while. Say, what are you doing tonight? Oh, nothing, I guess. Oh, yes, you are. Look, I'm going to grab a bite to eat, and I'll pick you up about 8 o'clock. We're going to celebrate. Oh, well, all right. Bye. Hello. Oh, hello, Betty. Oh, hello, Joe. I won't be able to go tonight. No. Steve's coming over. Oh, gee, honey, that's too bad. Well, look, uh, I'll come on over anyway, and maybe the three of us can go, huh? Sure, Steve won't mind. Okay, see you then. When are we going dancing again? Wait till I get over the last one. <laughs> Always clown, huh? Yeah. Pardon me, miss. Do you happen to know the man who just went out of here? Nope, never saw him before. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Out for a little fun and frolic, sir? Uh, did you say something? Oh. I was just asking if you were out for fun and frolic. Yeah, I'm just aching to kick up my heels. You've come to the right place there. Best music and finest entertainment in town. Oh, that's swell. Say, by the way, who owns this club? Fellow named Mascio. Why? Oh, I just wanted. Thank you. Nice place, huh, pal? What are you drinking? Give me some Irish whiskey. <laughs> I should have known it from that face of yours. That'll be six bits. <laughs> you think you can afford it? Oh, I know it's a little steep, but uh, look at the scenery that goes with it. I'd help you admire the scenery. All right, you're drinking all along. Oh, go ahead, I'll buy. That's better. Sammy, got some soda. Okay, coming up. You're a little bit early for the real fun, stranger. The floor show doesn't start till around midnight. In the meantime, my name's Flo. 
Oh, well. I can give you a conversation. I'll be a good listener, depending on the mood you're in. That'll be six bits more, pal. First this evening. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, this is my idea of doing nothing. Sitting here playing Chinese checkers when we could be out somewhere dancing, having a lot of fun. Mm, it isn't very exciting, is it? Well, what do you say we get out of here? Mm, no, I wouldn't do that to Steve. We could dance here till he comes. All right. So I said to the guy, listen, I said, if you're as crazy about me as all that, you'll do something about getting me out of the village of Apple Creek, Ohio. <laughs> Nothing important's happened in this burg since they brought in double featured pictures. So this guy says, okay, we'll hit the big town. And that's how I got here. And do you know something, Hanson? I haven't seen a guy that got me out of that town since we got off the train at Union Depot. He excused himself to check a bag and never came back. So I says to myself, Hey, handsome, you ain't listening to a word I'm telling you. Quiet, quiet. Hey, wait a minute. I'll be right back. Say, Dorman. Yes, sir? Whose car was that? I don't know. A lot of cars stop and leave here every night. Well, you know the fellas that got in it? They just came out of the club here. Did they? Must have been customers, huh? Ah, oh, skip it. Don't tell me. I know what you're going to say. That you're Steve's girl and I'm Steve's friend. Well, aren't you? Look, Betty, that friendship business was all right as long as... as long as there wasn't a girl like you around. But after I started taking you out places, things changed. For a long time, I, I tried to kid myself into believing that... that I was doing it for Steve. Good old Steve. But I can't kid myself any longer. I'm crazy about you, honey. No, no, don't, Joe. Let's sit down. I want to talk to you. Well? Maybe you do love me, Joe, but I don't love you. And if I'd known things were going to turn out this way, I wouldn't have let you take me out places. I've stayed home and waited for Steve. But, honey... No, let me finish. I know Steve hasn't paid much attention to me lately, but there's been a reason for that. The reason I understand. Oh, Steve trusts you, Joe. And he trusts me. We don't want to spoil that, do we? You see, I love Steve. And I don't want to hurt you. So let's forget it, shall we? Yeah, all right, we'll forget. Steve's a very lucky guy. Well, I guess I'll be running along. Oh, don't you want to stay till he comes? No, I don't believe I will tonight. You tell him I'll see him tomorrow. Okay. Good night, Betty. Good night, Joe. You've been swell.
car here registered under that number. Who rented it last night? Who wants to know? Well, that's different. This man rents it by the month. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I guess you won't be writing out any ticket for him, will you, Copper? <laughs> no. I guess we better forget about the whole thing. Thanks very much. Good morning, Captain. Oh, it's you. Yes, I'd like to have a little talk with you. Listen, Hannigan, you've done all the talking around here you're going to. Give me your badge. I've got something I want to tell you. You'll tell me nothing. I told you once I'd give you another chance, and I did. You don't want to be an officer, Hannigan. You just want to play detective. Well, you're through playing. Give me that badge. Okay. There's my badge. And now that I'm not a cop anymore, let me tell you something. There was only one reason I ever tried to get on the force, and that was to find the man who killed my father. Well, I found him. And now that I know who he is, I won't need that badge to do what I'm going to do. I came here to ask you for a few men to help me, but I think I can handle this myself. This afternoon, I'm going to get enough proof on the man who killed my father to send him straight to the chair. More than all your cops have been able to do in the last six months. Mr. Steve. Nobody home now. You come back later. Thank you. Goodbye. Get that closet. But Mr. Steve, I thought... Go what on, get that closet. Will Steve be surprised? <laughs> right here. There it is. I picked it out all by myself for the sweetest girl I know. Oh, Joe, it's beautiful. Tell you what, let's not tell Steve a thing about it until after the wedding. All right. That's a swell idea. Don't tell him a thing about it. 
Hey, what is this? Get in the library, both of you. Now, wait a minute, Steve. I said get in the library. Sit down. Both of you. Steve Hannigan, are you crazy? I was crazy enough to think that I loved you until last night. Steve, you, you got this all wrong. Oh, no, I haven't. I've got it right for the first time when I saw you kissing him last night. But that didn't mean a thing. That's right. Probably didn't mean any more than the kisses you used to give me. But that's okay with me. Steve, you don't know what you're saying. Oh, yes, I do. You make a fine pair. Betty Casey, two-timer deluxe. And Joe Kelly, my best friend. The man who knew all along who killed my father. Steve, you're crazy. Sit down. I suppose you didn't know that your Uncle Jimmy was the boss of every racket in this town. Political fixer. The guy who cuts in on everything. And the guy who ordered my father killed. You're out of your mind. I didn't know a thing oh, about no, it, Steve. Not. After I lay this book on the DA's desk and his uncle tangles with the law, maybe you won't be so anxious to marry a Kelly. Don't shoot him yet, Ben. But let him have it if he moves. Uncle Jim, what's this all about? Don't ask questions, Joe. Take his gun, Ben. And that book, too. What's this stuff about you killing Steve's father? Shut up. You talk too much. Some people are never satisfied until they know too much. That was your father's fault, Hannigan, and you seem to be afflicted the same way. It's too bad. Save the conversation. What are you going to do about it? That's a brave attitude, Hannigan. Like your father again. To tell you the truth, I don't know. This situation is complicated. Very complicated. I know the answer. That's what you thought once before, Ben. Killing Hannigans may amuse you. But it doesn't seem to solve our problem. Who's popping off too much now? Are you questioning my judgment? Well, uh, you're the boss. Joe, take that girl and get out of here. No. I'm staying right here. If you had anything to do with killing Steve's father, I'm going to stay and see that nothing happens to Steve. Get out, I see. Well, he killed Pop. Jim Kelly hired him to do it. Get him out of here and call the ambulance in the corner. Yeah. Hey, what's the big idea? Shut up, your fool. I'm just after telling you if Jim Kelly is dead. You can't go around killing people without a badge. You're still a copper, Steve Hannigan, and a good one. Joe. Hi, you pal. Hi, you kid. Steve. Yeah. Do, do I get a clean bill of health now? I didn't know my uncle would... Oh, sure, Joe. You saved my life, fella. Oh, forget it. I guess... I guess the Kellys owed the Hannigans that much. Oh, stop talking like a funeral, Joe. Well, in a couple of days, you'll be as right as rain. Yeah. Sure, I know. I'm gonna be okay. But... One thing first. Betty and me, you... You got it all wrong, kid. 
I think you're swell. Both of you. I know, Joe. And, and we're still pals, huh, Steve? Oh, sure, we're still pals. I remember when, when we were kids and we, we used to play cops and robbers? <laughs> Funny, isn't it? Only, only then I wouldn't lie down when I was supposed to be dead. Remember, Stevie? 